since they've played at home and I know how excited everybody is for that and, and I think they'll be wanting to put on a show for the crowd that has turned out today. All right, well, amazing, Jenny. Well, what an afternoon we have here in Edinburgh. Let's get straight to it. Here's our comms team of Heather Lockhart, who's almost, with Thomas Duncan. As we know, is almost anything. Well, 12 months ago, Scotland could not buy a test victory. Now they seem to have forgotten how to lose. A run of 12 straight defeats has become seven wins on the spin. But now here at the place where they can finally call home comes the biggest test of their recent rejuvenation. A France side full of ballast and power, but also with a penchant for the sublime. They're in town with thoughts of breaking England's stranglehold in the Six Nations firmly on their minds. It was a 55-0 route for Les Bleus over in Van a year ago. And they are firm favourites to take the spoils once again. But how much more competitive can the Scots be in front of a vibrant home crowd? Which in terms of ticket sales is a record. Over 5,000 breaking. And the 4,800 that packed in to witness Scotland's win against Ireland in the final game of the last campaign. And now, given the form Scotland are in, the crowd that are here at the Hive are expectant but France are a step up from what Scotland have faced in their recent good run of seven straight wins and we'll see really just how much they've improved when it comes to taking on one of the world's top three sides France got their campaign underway last week with a solid bonus point win against Ireland although there were plenty of mistakes in there plenty of frustrations but they're a team who so often grow into championships the expansive game they like to play can take a little while to click out there on the park and that will be Scotland's worry as France certainly like to throw the ball around but whether Scotland too can match that given the rugby they played last week in Cardiff, getting the ball to the edge and releasing the likes of Corrine Grant and Rona Lloyd. They've got an exciting back three again as the teams prepare to emerge from the sheds in the main Murrayfield Stadium and through and into the tunnel at the Hive here, the home of Edinburgh Rugby and the Scotland women's team. Great to see so many young faces packed in to cheer on their heroes. Louise McMillan there preparing to lead Scotland out on the occasion of her 50th cap. Such a magnificent journey for her. She spoke about it so well yesterday, how she's standing on the shoulders of those who've come before who because of a lack of professionalism, never made it to 50 caps. Well, that is not a problem anymore for McMillan and this Scotland team as they emerge at the Hive. Gael Hermé as well, leading out France on the occasion of her 60th cap. And it is Louise McMillan 
managing to enjoy the occasion before the business resumes. Teams line up, preparing for the anthems. Well, a message that rugby is against all forms of discrimination before we get the anthems of both sides and it will be La Marseillaise to begin with followed by Flower of Scotland Here we go, La Mercedes first up. Lots of emotion from both sets of players as well as in the stands. We are so close to round two of the Six Nations getting underway. Let's have a look at the team. Injury. So Louise McMillan brings up a half century in dark blue in the second row. Ellis Martin makes her first start at Hooker in the backs, a potent back line. Grab two coach scores in Cardiff and get another goal. Can Kareen Grant back up her player of the match performance from last week? Ronald Lloyd has now won 22 Scotland tries, more than any player in the current squad. Well, France go with nearly the same 15 which defeated Ireland. The only changes in the back row were Axel Bertumieu starts at blindside in place of Charlotte Escudero, who is on the bench. Roman Menager is shaken off an ankle knock to pack down at number eight again. Well, it's a back line stuffed with talent, I and mean, there are fewer talented with ball in hand than fullback Emily Boulard, who grabbed a hat trick against Scotland a year ago. Gabriel Vernier was voted player of the championship last year and has a brilliant all round game. 
Saracens second row Fiona McIntosh and Edinburgh University flyer Nicole Flynn could make their Scotland debuts from the bench. France also have a relatively callow set of replacements but still pack a mighty punch. Well, France prepared to get things other underway as Jasmine Paris presented the match ball, the ultra-marathon runner. Ran just 100 miles over thousands of feet of climbing, the equivalent of scaling Everest twice at the Barkley Marathons earlier this month. Not for the faint-hearted, I would suggest, but now the pleasantries are out the way. Sarah Cox will take charge of this one, the referee, first full-time female referee, a trailblazer amongst many on the pitch this afternoon as France kick us off. Lena Kirwa hoists it into the Edinburgh sky and Scotland claim comfortably. And we'll set things up. Heather Lockhart, former Scotland front rower alongside me. France come with so much talent, Heather. Scotland on a good run. This is going to be fascinating, isn't it? Absolutely. Afternoon, first time at the high for this fixture, um, both on one out of one and just absolutely desperate to, to take away two out of two, both sides. So a thrilling matchup and a record crowd, five and a half thousand here today and in fine voice already. France already looking to get it wide, but there's a knock on in there, which Scotland will take. Advantage being played as Mattinson gets there. McMillan. On to Thompson, who's caught by Filio. Mattison comes back the other way, across the halfway line, but will come back for the scrum. Yeah, just a, a mistimed pass there, just going on the on the shoulder of Kalfoui, the, the tight head prop. France last week had quite a few handling errors, 34 to be exact, and an opportunity here for Scotland. They've been working with Gary Strain, uh, the scrum coach, and Ellis Martin will pack a, a down at Hooker for starting a um, jersey. Yeah, big moments for Martin and the rest of the Scotland pack as France have a fearsome scrum. Lots of power. You can see Anael Day eyeing up our opposite number there as Mattinson puts it in. It's solid from both. Gallagher picks it up at the back. Mattinson shovels it on to Merrill Smith, the fullback. Manages to find some space where there was none. Malcolm, the captain, onto Gallagher. Skill, it's Martin, I beg your pardon, that's habit, Lana Skeldon. So used to her seeing it run out for Scotland, unfortunately injured. As Thompson prods the little kick in behind. She grabbed a 50-22 last week. Not this time as it's cleared down the pitch, but that's a net gain from a Scotland point of view. Yeah, very much so. Scotland with a strong scrum there, chose to go down the blind side, went through the phases, and Thompson uh, in practice yesterday at the captain's run was practicing that very kick, just trying to get that depth and put the, the French um, uh, defence under pressure. Scotland, of course, coming into this match with such huge momentum that started here at the Hive with wins against Italy and Ireland at the tail end of the last Six Nations is... That line-out goes astray, and that was an issue last week in Cardiff. And as France clear out, Bourdon Sanssouce always a live wire, fizzes it away, Condé carries, Gallagher lifts the leg and drives back. Bourdon Sanssouce sniping, Ménager, Condé off the floor, France keeping it alive as they love to do. Here's Madusu Fall. And Bourdon Sanssouce spotted a gap, but that's a horrible slice, and that's out on the full. So Scotland will have the line out in line with where that was kicked. 
Yeah, you just saw Corrine Grant um, doing a high five with Hell Nelson. Hell Nelson with a really, really good cover tackle there. Read the, 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 the sniping line there by Pauline Bourdon Sansousa at number nine. Really is such a quality player. Scored in the first two minutes last week against Ireland and one to watch. Absolutely lovely little reverse pass for the second try as well. It put Menager in as Scotland secure this one. And it's Thompson. Mattinson has it. Gallagher loves to get stuck in the Scotland number eight. That's MR opts to put the kick in. And that's going to skip away from Boulard. Fullback collects. And she really does like stretching those long legs, but Scotland with a really good chase. There's numbers at the rock there as well. France pinned back. Set up the rock to box kick. And again, Scotland's winning the territorial battle at the moment, Heather. Yeah, that's the second long kick opting to... So obviously it's a tactic, and um, that was Emma Orr's kick um, again. And the kick chase was really good there. Good pressure into the 22. Yeah, it was France kicked more than anyone else in round one. Last week, 31 kicks they put in. Scotland kicked the least, but when they did, they did so fairly cleverly, but another one doesn't quite go to plan off the top. Cleared by Vernier, claimed by Smith. Hauled to deck. McMillan spins away. Bartlett goes over the line. Scotland's struggling for go forward at the moment as they set up the opportunity for Katie Mattinson to kick. It's put up there and it's well judged, not into the 22. And again, the chase is on point. Wassel trying to hold up the, tack, the French player. Clearance comes in. Mattinson gathers. And the pass is ambitious. Trying to put away Kareem Grant up the left wing, but too much on it. Yeah, the kicking game is very much going to be part of this game. Yeah, just a... A, a loose pass there by Mattison, but the line out from the from the previous just like not quite going to hand. Scotland are going to have work on that, but definitely the kicking game from both sides is going to be crucial. France take that one comfortably through Menager. Both twin sisters in the 15. Roman the number eight, Marine the winger. Here's Bourdon Sansus. Gets it away to Vernier, pops it back up to the scrum half. And there's a break here from Menager. Tries to step. Brilliant from the number eight, she's still going, hauled down by Smith, and then Scotland get in there and win it back, a crucial turnover. Danger still not gone, as Wassel takes it in, France causing havoc, and then it's a penalty to the French, but that's a glimpse of just how effective they can be, Heather, with ball in hand. Great cover tackle there, but Scotland just not quite exiting and giving away the penalty there for um, taking the player without the ball. Well, this is real danger for Scotland and an opportunity for France. 
Here's the little break, Heather. Just pick up and go. Yeah, just saw the guard wasn't quite in place. And brilliant cover tackle. Well, France scored all five tries last week against Ireland from the line out on that one. It's not as they would have hoped, just after giving them the big build up. Scotland need to secure this ball. They've got a committee of forwards around it to try and shield it, protect it, before they can thump this down the pitch. Mattinson takes responsibility. That's a decent effort from the scrum half. Great organisation there for, from Scotland um, just to do the, the box kick exit and also good awareness from Helen Nelson off the back of the line out to tidy up. France only lost two line outs against Ireland uh, last week. There were 17 line outs and they got 15 out of 17. Yeah, it's a real weapon for them. Launch a lot of their attacks, whether it be driving balls closer to the line or launch plays. And here we go. Kerwa, Vernier, shows and goes. And they come back the other way. Condé, little delay on the pass. Gael Hermé, the former captain, scragged by Dark Blue. Big, big carry. Kalfawi. The shuddering physicality of the French to the fore here. And Kiroa with a little pop. Which goes to ground. And they're going to be playing advantage here. Scotland have infringed. Bourdon Sansus. Kalfawi, the prop. Menage, no one carried more last week in round one. Socha, the hooker. Scotland's defence being thoroughly tested. Momentum halted slightly. These are dangerous times for Scotland. France building the phases and the counter up comes in from Wassel, but we'll go back for the long advantage and the penalty. Yeah, it was a deliberate knock on, Sarah Cox is just saying there. So. Yeah, you talk about there, we see it just, yeah. Yeah, when the hand's out like that, it's just to slap the ball down and France are going to go for posts. They were 100% from the tee against Ireland. Lina Kirwa. Yeah, she got 11 points last yeah. week against Ireland. Yeah, four from four, and this is about as simple as she can get for a wee opener for the French fly half. I suppose, Heather, it is a, perhaps a sign of respect for the Scotland defence that they're taking the three here. They yeah. might have gone to their line out, Mall. Yeah, that one down in the corner was a bit messy, so I think just to settle the nerves here, as they did against Ireland, just to take the points. <laughs> Nicely done from K. Roy. And France are on the boards. Certainly that came from the pressure from the ball carriers. We talked about number three, uh, Kafoui, and number eight, Romain Menager. Definitely their main ball carriers uh, from last week. And Scotland go again. Thompson with the restart. Bourdon Sansus with a little chip. Sits up for Thompson. Tackled by Fall. Oh, 
Nelson, outstanding last week. Smith, and it's flung on by Orr, collected by Rona Lloyd. Scored the second try in Cardiff last week. Sevens flyer. Found our pathway to the try line shut down as Scotland come back the other way. Stabbed kick in, and that was beautifully judged in the end. Lisa Thompson, such a brilliant weapon for them to have her ability with the boot in midfield, Taylor. Yeah, that was done with a real assuredness. She's been playing sevens, but um, last week she definitely grew into the game, got that 50-22 kick, and they are just finding touch there, putting again the French under pressure in their own 22. That did look like a little bit of a high shot there from Manet Filou, uh, French captain. Not much force in it, but around the head of Rona Lloyd. Here's Gourdon Sansus. France looking to batter their way out of trouble, but they're penalised. Big penalty for Scotland. Evie Gallagher takes some congratulations. She's just on it so quickly, Evie Gallagher. Really turnovers her thing. We just say here. Great initial contact in the tackle. That's from Alex Stewart, only on her second cap. And then Gallagher right in jackling putting the pressure on to get to get that turnover in the penalty. A couple of steals last week. Hit the most defensive rucks as well for Scotland. Brilliant player. And now Helen Nelson, who was 100% from the tee herself last week against Wales, has a chance to restore parity on the scoreboard. That's a scuff from Helen Nelson. She'll be frustrated with that one. As I mentioned, kicked beautifully last week, and it turned out to be crucial in Scotland's victory. She'll want to move on hastily from that one. It remains 3-0 to France. Yeah, she just caught it, didn't she? Just curved round, so yeah, next job. Nelson collects, it's going to be sent back. Boulard watches it, and it skips away. And behind, which means we're going to come all the way back. And it is difficult on AstroTurf, especially to get the, the judgment of those kicks right, Heather. Absolutely, because it does bounce, it does carry the ball there. So an an another pitch where it might stay in the 22, there it is, carrying on and out. So you come back for, for a scrum where the, the, the ball was kicked from. You can see those metres made by the French carries. And they possess so much power up front especially. Yeah, Scotland will have to, yeah, just be careful around the breakdown. Menage and Bordon Sansu is always sniping. Well, the first scrum was even Stevens, really. It was solid from both. France will certainly fancy this is an area they can get dominance at. Scotland's scrum has improved hugely over. Last couple of years. Yeah, very much so. And uh, Bartlett and Martin have been playing uh, for Leicester Tigers, so have that connection at club level, and that always helps them um, at international level. It's rolled in, and there's a turn before it wheels back the other way. Here's Bernier, Conde, 
Shows bounces off one tackle. And it's over the top. Arbe. Bullard outside. Little dummy. Still going. Kelly Arbe. Bourdon Sansus. France. Carrying closer. So sharp goes down. Filio, the captain, takes on the responsibility. Here's Menage, double hit, stretches, won't make it. Still the pressure comes. Bourdon Sansus fizzes it out. Conde, did she drop that? She did. And Scotland survive. Excellent play there by both sides. France really showing their attacking flair. 22 offloads last week and really just getting on the ball down that left-hand side. Conde, really hard to bring down, keeps her arms high. She's tall, she's able to offload down that left-hand side channel. But they are just a bit ambitious there. And the pass, yeah, just dying on its feet there. Yeah, not the best ball. You can see the idea was to just take out all the, French, uh, the Scottish yeah, tacklers absolutely. in one sweeping pass, but not quite the execution required. Conde, sevens player, Olympic silver, put her in space and she can certainly go and she proved that over on the far side, but Scotland will need a big shunt here. Gallagher tries to pick up at the back and the penalty comes for Scotland. Well, that was a mighty relief for Brian Eason's side. So what the referee, Sarah Cox, is saying that France went forward at the start, but then came around in the angle, the loose head there, uh, De Hay coming round in, in the left there and boring in, so um, penalty Scotland. Certainly Scotland are getting the initial shove on, but then France seemed to get the, the secondary shove on at the scrum time. Thompson puts it on the roof of the stand jealous Martin there first Scotland start having made our first six nations appearance in round one great experience for her stepping in for the experienced Lana Skeldon who was forced off in the second half against Wales yeah, knee, knee injury to, to Lana. Hopefully she'll be back later on in the championships. But opportunity here for Ellis. Got her first cap here two years ago against the USA at the last minute. Um, Jodie Reti um, dropped out through, through illness, so um, played here two years ago, first cap. Martin throws it in. It's slapped away by Wassel and Gallagher collects and makes a few metres while she's at it. Malcolm, shuddering hit, goes in. Nelson puts boot to ball and gets a good bit of distance. The sun in Boulard's eyes, but she claims it comfortably. Menager, not the best pass, but it pops up for Vernier, who was magnifique in the championship last year. Player of the tournament. Yeah, five tries for her. Yeah, she's wonderful. So many in this French backline are. Look, Chip goes in from. And Superb pickup there by Alex Stewart. Who's already making a name for herself, Alex Stewart, having made her debut in round one. Here comes Scotland. Thompson decides to kick for space and it goes up and I don't know why he put the pressure on, but Scotland gaining some territory. Yeah, that kicking down that right channel. So just trying to trying to get in behind um, France through the kicking game. France trying to get in behind Scotland through the offloading game. But what a wonderful there catch there. Good uh, connection there with the ball there. Good hand-eye coordination by Alex Stewart. That's okay, that's okay. Just run them. That's all. Six. Yeah. Gets Sosha, throws it in. France 
get it, but going backwards at the moment. Carried by Fall. They missed last year's championship through injury. Back with a bang, player of the match against Ireland. Crunching hit. France not messing about. Oh, lovely hands. And Lloyd is brought down. Scotland getting into position. Here's Stewart, puts the head down. And the referee's going to stop play here because there's potential. Head knock for Gabriel Vernier. Yeah. Head on head with our own teammate there. Yeah. They both went high. Yeah, well, if you're going to hit clash heads with one of your teammates, you probably don't want it to be the prop, but maybe that's unfair, Heather. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, great to see, see she's receiving some treatment there. And um, interesting spot in there in their units rather than a, as a whole, just uh, discussing what they're going to be doing next. I think they were just like trying to just like uh, clarify and make the, uh, the line out a tad more accurate. And um, the rhythms there, we got that uh, Scotland got the last one there. So just trying to do that. And Banahan, Matt Banahan there on with the water, talking to the backs just probably about the kicking and about the continuity and how to get in behind and put pressure on that French defence. Scotland's defence, um, Brian Easton talked about it prior to the match, 97.04% success, top um, of all the Six Nations uh, last week, and Scotland be wanting to keep, keep hold of that pressure in defence against the French. Yeah, they only missed five of their 169 tackles last week. They've already missed eight in this first half, but I think that's probably an indication of just the strength, power, and the guile of France as well. Yeah, down, definitely down, uh, the wide channels, the offloading game, they're looking to do it in that 50-metre wide channel, both sides. Both wingers coming off their wing to, to get involved. And Scotland's all packed down once again. The scrum's been... Strong for them so far. Mattinson taps Gallagher, gets the ball. Nelson, it's just over the top. Scotland under pressure. Smith pounces on the ball as it escaped. Malcolm. Belial. Nelson feeds Stewart on a good line. And it's popped out the side of the ruck here. Kalfawi has it. And then the penalty in. Pauline Bourdon Sansu scores quickly. She's on her own. Gets the offload away to Bertomieu. Romain Menager over Vernier's head. Conde picks up. France still going. Menager. Always popping up, willing to take the ball. Hermé. France trying to play quickly. Bertomieu. Martin tries to hold up the flanker. Here's Ménager. Smashed low. And then Philou picks up, gets the offload away. Bourdon Sansus snaffled. And now here goes a big carry. Scotland just keeping France at bay. And has it lost, been lost forward there? It's 
superb defence there by, by Scotland. France, though, that got, uh, Marine Menage, really outstanding, hard, hard carries there. Calfoui just short of the try line there. But yeah, France, really, really strong ball carriers, know how to reorganise. Yeah, held up. So Scotland's defence, it's a couple of times now they've had to hold out on their own line and got away with it. Excellent defence, France really trying to put the pressure on. Yeah, that close quarter uh, last week against Ireland, fall, that's how she got her try, just wave after wave. But it's interesting, they don't just come round the corner and do one hit, they're offloading like Fileo, offloaded, like did a little pop off the ground, lovely to see, or a second pass, um, a tip pass. So they're always trying to vary the point of contact. Well, Vernier is going to go off after that head knock and Morgan Bourgeois, who is a fullback by trades, is on. So you can only assume that's a, an HIA for Vernier. Head injury assessment. And here is Bourgeois, first touch. Gives it to Ménager. And France go up the left, Boulard gets it away. Huge carry from day eight. Spun away, Kirwat. Scotland on the back foot once more. Bertumieu. And a counter ruck from Malcolm. And the knock on is forced by the Scotland captain. Big moment, big plays in defence keep coming from a Scotland point of view. Yeah, absolutely. We saw the French attack there. Again, offloading outside in that left 15-metre channel and then coming in uh, right in front of the sticks there. But, um, yeah, just fantastic counter-rucking there by Rachel Malcolm. She's not letting anyone across that line if she can help it. Fantastic play both sides. It's picking your moment, and she picked the right moment there. Absolutely. Timed to perfection. We'll have another scrum, the fifth of the first half. Again, it's solid. Mattinson gets it to Smith, charged down. Nelson's there, offloads it to Grant. Scotland's breathe a sigh of relief. The forward set this one up. Thompson says enough is enough. And that's a fantastic kick, but it's claimed by Bourgeois. The flag goes up, it's in touch. What a clearance that is from the boot of Lisa Thompson. And even before that, it was the composure. There was the charge down, but Helen Nelson, right on her own line, had the composure, pop pass to Corrine Grant. And just the foot in touch there by the slenderest of margins. Super kick, though, by Lisa Thompson. And Scotland's have certainly showed good intent with the, the boot. Trying to pin France back at times, and that one was just to calm things down and get themselves out of trouble. Boy, did they do that. Martin, that's an overthrow. Another line out. A stray from Scotland, kick stabbed in, Arbade's going to go after this, and the winger keeps it in and sends it back, and Scotland will get another chance. Lisa Thompson really, really finding her range. Line out has got to be accurate, you can see the forwards there just having discussions, so just make it simple, make it safe, make it clean. Yeah, they struggled last week after scoring off one line out Scotland, they had some issues, they managed to get into the sheds at half-time and sort it in the second half, but need to fix what's going wrong here, and they do claim this one, it's not clean though, Gallagher always in the right place. 
grasps the ball. Now it's with Malcolm from a standing start. Mattinson, Delisle. And there's a Scotland penalty not releasing. I wonder if they'll think about having another go at the sticks here, Heather. Yeah, we'll see what see what happens there. That line out there, it was much. Uh, it, it's just going. I think slight, the ball's just slightly too high, so just bring it down. A wee bit of wind as well, just bring it slightly down. Uh, France, uh, France are competing, so that's making it hard as well. But good carries here, good strong hard carries. The organisation is good at close quarters here. So not releasing there. Yeah, it's Kalfawi who helps bring the player down and then doesn't release before then going and try and win the ball. So have to let go, show the referee you're letting go almost in an exaggerated manner and then go back in for it. And the good news for Scotland is uh, Evie Gallagher seems like she's able to shake off that little knock. Let's see what the decision is here. It looks like Lisa Thompson is going to stick this towards the corner. Showing ambition for sure. And it's right down there. And now can Scotland get a line out going? Yeah, you can see what Scotland's attack plan is, pinning them down in these corners and um, through the kicking game. That one's better. And now comes the drive. The heave. The forwards. Stick the heads down. And drive for the line. They've been told. That's once. It's still going. Mattinson tries to get Kalfawi out there. Hermes in. Kept her bind, making a nuisance of herself. There's Martin with the ball. The drive's going to go over the line, but is it going to be grounded? It doesn't look like it. Short. Scotland's still just about with it. Bartlett lays it back. Malcolm, not the best pass. Still alive, though. Scotland smell a try here. There's an advantage coming. There's space out wide as well, if they fancy it. Mattinson does. Helped on, and the pass is shut down. Thompson. Mattinson looks up, and it's all a bit of a mess. And we'll come back for the Scotland penalty. Breathless stuff. Absolutely. You can hear the, the, the crowd absolutely loving that line-out and that line-out more drive. Scotland last week got two tries from out wide from the two wingers. Here, the, the forward power is starting to, to show, come to the fore. Shouts of Scotland, Scotland. The crowd like what they're seeing. France hold out, though. The first time they've really had to on their own line. And Thompson says, when you go, girls, let's have another go. It's going to take some effort, you have to say, to blast through the white wall of France. Here's the set-piece opportunity. Martin, Lasso claims it. And here we go, drive again. Martin has it under a rockster. Here we go, Scotland, over the line, try! Their persistence pays off. And Scotland hit the front through the power of their forwards. France splintered, disintegrated. And Ellis Martin, on her first Scotland start, gets her first Scotland try. Amazing play there by, by Scotland. Just, it shows just like making that line out safe and it was just the momentum that was there right from the start the drive the drive and just the finish that was a, a team try if ever there was one
Scotland's beating France at their own game. And Helen Nelson will do her best to add the extras and make it 7 3. It's just curled wide from Helen Nelson. It remains a two-point game. But this time last year, Scotland headed to the dressing rooms at halftime, 17-0 down. They are 5-3 in front against one of the favourites for the Six Nations. Perhaps no surprise that Scotland have scored from the line out. 12 out of 15 in last year's Six Nations was scored from that very source. And they can get it working, it is such a weapon for them. As the ball pops up for Bartlett, and that's okay. a permanent change for France. Gabriel Vernier is not going to return from our HIA. And Morgan Bourgeois stays on. And Bourgeois misses at the first attempt. Here's Kirwa. And that's a good kick off the right boot. Gets France out of their own 22. Yeah, the kicking game is real, real um, expertise there. Some of the girls, seven, have played for Edinburgh Rugby, so know this pitch well. I oh, beg your pardon, my mistake. Gabrielle Vernier is back on, but then it. So she's obviously past her. HIA and there goes Bourgeois making way. So Vernier is back on and that is positive news for France. Nelson gives it Superb to line. Thompson on the crash ball. Belial Stewart hitting the line. Nelson Imor takes the tackle. Gallagher with a big fend and still makes yards under pressure. And Mattinson hooks one over the top. And here's Bullock, who's going to go for a run, but Scrag down to the artificial turf. And in the penalty, it's Scotland's. Rona Lloyd celebrates. Yeah, look how much that means to Rona Lloyd. Playing in this pitch, so this, uh, this is where she's from, Tynecastle High, and just everything there, just right on it and uh, gaining a crucial penalty for her side. <laughs> They've done their homework, they know what a threat Bular is. Lovely tackle there by, by Emma Orr. Great teamwork there, Louise McMinnlet applauding. And Scotland's are not quite in the 22 but with a minute to go to the break they have a chance to try and add to their lead Martin claimed by Belial Gallagher goes over the top but there's brilliant from the French captain Manai Filiou straight over the top, sniffed an opportunity and clamped herself on there. Yeah, France are marking that middle ball at the line out. Um, Wassel at the back has seemed to be working, but uh, great play there by uh, at the break line there by France. And we will have time for this line out. Can France respond? Not many would have predicted this as the clock goes red on 40 minutes. Yeah, great pick up by Belial, but Filio there just too strong, too quick. Sosha picks out her captain. Clean ball. 
And France are going to try and maul their way into Scotland territory. And it's working so far. Sosha has it, the hooker. Gallagher always making such a nuisance of herself in there. And it's excellent from Scotland. And Evie Gallagher in particular. Yeah, if any, any young girls watching want to do how Mall defence, that was really outstanding. Gallagher came, came in legally and uh, worked with Rachel Malcolm and um, held up um, the ball. Uh, so uh, turnover there for, for, for Scotland. Well, we won't have time for any more action in this first half, but what a first half it's been. A turn up for the books, you would have to say. France, heavy, heavy favourites, but it's Scotland who have the leads. Lina Kirwa may have given France the lead with an early penalty, but Ellis Martin's try from the back of them all means at half-time at the Hive Stadium it is Scotland 5, France 3. Yeah, just fantastic they play there. Scotland have really come into it. Their kicking game is key, and now that the line-out is working better, that's putting them in better positions, better able to put France under pressure. Um, France is tackling, though, outstanding, and they're a danger in that 22. But, uh, put, uh, Bourdon Sansus always, always attacking hard. And uh, Menage and Calfoui, some outstanding hits by the forwards as well.
an enticing second period we have before us. Certainly wasn't in the script for Scotland to be leading France 5-3 at half-time and the French are back out quickly and going through some warm-up drills as Scotland emerged to thunderous applause. Well, they'll be far from complacent. They've not beaten France since 2010. And a foggy day, I'm told. The woman alongside me who played in the Lockhart at Las Wades in the 12 meetings since. France are unbeaten, just the one draw in there, 11 victories. And as we mentioned, last year it was 55 0, with the bulk of those points scored in the 15 20 minutes after half time. So, Heather, Scotland will be extremely wary of what's coming at them in response from France in the second half. Very much so, yeah. Scotland, since that France meeting, haven't haven't lost a match, and and two years ago also in the second half um, held at France to a nil nilness, and then Chloe Rowley scored. So, and you mentioned the draw in 2020 as well. So, and the win in 2010. So, but they're navigating this really well. They know you can see exactly the game plan, the kicking game, getting in behind and the press and the line out, ironing out the creases in that, and look how tight and together they are. Big second half coming up. Yeah, and we'll 
Need to see what the wind's doing here at the Hive. It's really rather exposed, so it can come and go and change direction, but the kicking was certainly on point from hands, especially from Lisa Thompson there in the opening periods. Scotland's 40 minutes from a truly historic victory. But France will have a thing or two to say before we get to that point. As Lisa Thompson gets us underway and it's sent back and Meryl Smith with the error. And I was just going to mention you know, the fact the sun is now in the back three eyes for Scotland. Yeah, you could just see that there. I think definitely that was affecting the, the take there from Meryl Smith. And a bit of the wind as well, I think, slightly with, um, you can see the flags just slightly with France for this half. Yeah, a little error to start the second period. And France will enjoy having the set piece here. Scotland get up well at the back of the line out, but France claim it. Kirwa, Vernier, and with Bertemieux. Speed of ball now for France. And they go up the far side. Menager, Boulard, Emily Boulard brought down four metres short. Bertemieux with Socha on her shoulder. And it's now Kalfawi tries to power those legs over the line, but Scotland resist. The kick comes in and it's gone behind. And France. The opportunity passes them by. Yeah, it's an interesting matchup again. They're trying to get out in those wide channels. That offloading game there, we see Bular arcing round, but fantastic tackle there. Excellent tackle there by Rona Lloyd. And again, Stevens is slowing it down in front of the post where Scotland have repelled them. They tried the kick, but it's just gone slightly awry. Come on, we've got to make a decision. Let's go. Scrum. On you, Patrick. Scotland up for the scrum after that was kicked dead by France, who probably rushed that a little because they had space out wide and they had Scotland defending for their lives. Probably not the need to go for the kick so urgently, but... Yeah, it looked like they probably talked about it at half-time. Sometimes you've just got to play what you see rather than what you've pre-discussed at half-time. You've just amend it slightly. Important scrum. Attenson pops the pill in. On to Nelson. Now Emma Orr is going to carry this one and carry it well. Scotland keeping their composure as they try and work an opportunity to boot this away. It's back to Nelson, who does just that. And it's a Really good effort from the Scotland fly half. Yeah, territory green there of over 30 metres. That's an excellent exit kick. Definitely the benefit of training more full time. They've been training five, five weeks together uh, in camp and just like the repetition, repetition of the, these set plays are just crucial. Scotland's desperate to try and finish as high as possible, potentially third spot, if they can finish above Ireland, Italy and Wales. They'll qualify for the World Cup in England, summer 2025, and here comes France Condé, and it's forced to RB, and then France penalised. And there is maybe just a sense, Heather, that France are just, maybe, we talked about chaos during the week, and they're perhaps forcing it a little. Yeah, it just looks to me like they are forcing it there. They've obviously discussed at half time. They're trying to do the, the release pass out the back and um, yeah, just, just forcing that extra pass when to go through the phases and stress uh, the Scottish defence that way. Conde there, yeah. Again, Rona Lloyd in defensive duties. Really, really good, really sharp. wasn't Lisa Thompson's finest kick. Yeah, raised her eyebrows, but Scotland claim it nonetheless. Here is Thompson, 
met by Bertemuer and foul. Oh, and that's a fierce shot. Not for the faint-hearted. Smith gives it to Lloyd. Hermes in there, told to release. She goes back in, though. Scotland get it away. Malcolm. Use it! Scotland have had enough of going through the phases and out on the full, though. Oh, Mattinson sliced. Just a few errors from both teams at the start of the second half. Gail Hermé on her 60th cap, number seven. The open side flanker being an absolute menace at the breakdown. Slowing it down, there's 33%, um, one to three seconds. Ideally, you want an under three second rut ball and uh, Scotland predominantly more in that three to six seconds. So France just, just slowing them down. Kafa Wee there in that set play as well was just slowing that ball down. Yeah, Scotland's had one of the slower ruck speeds in round one as well. It's something they'll look to improve on, but nonetheless, it's been an excellent 46 minutes for them. But France are certainly not going anywhere. Christine Belial giving her marching orders as Sosha. The hooker goes for the little clip. And there's Smith gives it to Orr, who takes it. Popped up to Lloyd. Stewart. Quick ball this time for Scotland as Belisle shovels it on to Martin, the try scorer. Nelson goes behind. Kick goes in and it's bubbling about horribly. And skips out of play for a line out to France. Emma Orr doing superbly well. That was a really, really hard take under pressure in her own 22 and managing to, to offload it off the deck as well. Just a 21 next week, but playing way beyond, way beyond her years. Really good play. She's such a class act, Emma Orr. I'm sure there's a few packed into bigger rugby club just now enjoying her performance as Scotland claim that one. McMillan with her paws on it. And now comes the carries. Brilliant stuff from Hermé though to disrupt once again. Thompson forced back inside and then driven backwards. Gallagher spins it to Nelson. Bartlett the prop to Malcolm. Good hands from Scotland. Not too many metres made, though, as Gallagher decides to get that piston-like arm out for the fend. Taken back over. And the kick comes in. It's going to go into the arms of Boulard, who sends it back on the left foot. And it goes into touch. It is always, as we mentioned, Heather, so awkward on the surface. It skips about horribly for these players. Yeah. France really making uh, Scotland work for every metre there, but some lovely hands there, especially from, from Leah Bartlett out wide, but not much territory gain, and, a, and a, a, uh, France putting uh, Scotland back uh, near their own 22. One of the France coaches just putting some instructions pitch side. And you can see that France are dominating in terms of the Physical exchanges with ball in hand in terms of the metres made. And here's Bertemieu, Kerroy, Vernier, tests the Scotland line. Now it's Condé, offload to Bertemieu. So sharp. Stopped in her tracks. Bertemieu has another go. Gallagher tries to snaffle it. Right France attack the rock. Here's Romain Ménager. Round one, Condé. Offload, lost forwards. And again, France just guilty of almost trying too hard to get those offloads away. It's up. Yeah, they're, they're offloading when it's in full flow is absolutely wonderful. I think in the it's sort of in the middle of the pitch, it seems to work. And then just when it goes a bit wider, just being forced the last couple one. But here we see Roman Manager 
Uh, Jake Conkle Roberts played with her at Lille. She's now at Montpellier and just, yeah, maybe just getting their wires crossed a bit there, Menage and RB. That's RB14 coming off her right wing and coming way over to that left channel. She did it in the first half as well, really looking for work and overloading uh, whatever side they're attacking on, and that makes them a real threat. Look at that stat there 11 offloads for France. That's their game. Yeah, it's risk and reward stuff when it comes off. It cuts teams to ribbons when it doesn't, and that's the result. Seven handling errors. And it's another scrum, which for Scotland is held up well. Gentle tailing off from the referee. Boys. Here we go again. Shuddering force through the spines of the 16 forwards. Here's Thompson, trucks it up. Mattinson goes digging. And now it's blasted off the pitch. France just trying to build pressure, keep Scotland down here, but Helen Nelson gets them out the 22 at least. Yeah, you can see from the assistant referee's flag, that wind is playing a part there down in that corner. It's, it's flying in the wind there. So um, yeah, that's definitely a consideration. Well, here comes Chloe Rowley, for Scotland's just working away back from an injury, the full back and changing the French front row as well. Ambre Moembe is on for Anael Deye. And Molly Wright there. <laughs> telling Agatso Shat it's her ball, so Molly Wright on at hooker for Scotland. Ellis Martin, the try scorer. Power of work she's done. Yeah, absolutely. Ellis Martin will be absolutely um, um, so pleased with her, her work rate in that first half. Really outstanding on her first start for Scotland. And uh, Molly Wright, who can cover both um, prop and, and hooker, is coming on to, to do the hooking duties. Molly missed last year's Six Nations, so again, thrilled to be back in this year's Six Nations through injury. Sasha now, she knows it's her ball. Spirals it in and it slips through the fingertips of Menage. France recover. Foul. Big hit from Stewart on the game line. Bourdon Sansus picks out Vernier. Tackle! And there's going to be a stop for an injury here. A Scotland player. Doesn't look great. Molly Wright, who's literally just come on the pitch, so it's slightly concerning from a Scotland point of view. But in terms of opening nearly 12 minutes of this first half, Heather, France, we expected they'd come out strong. They've had nearly all the territory in this second half, but still, they haven't managed to find a way through the Scotland rear guard. Yeah, I think what was working for France in the first half was um, they did the offloading game on the wide channels, and then in the 22 they came you know, in front of the sticks and came centre, but now they're trying to like move it out wide and um, a bit too early, and they're forcing the errors and the handling errors are coming in, and here we just see... Yeah, Madusu fall here. Yeah, just a tackle, I think, and... Uh, a stinger Molly's on the shoulder come, and then a yeah. head blow on the, yeah, on the way down. Yeah, off worse. Well, the stretcher's on. But in terms of defence for, for Scotland, they're dealing with it because they're putting the France under pressure, making them play that extra pass. Um, but certainly in terms of exiting, uh, the kicking, the wind is a consideration as well. Well, looks like Molly Wright is not going to be able to continue. So that's both Scotland hookers. Ellis Martin's departed. Molly Wright is 
going to have to go off here, so... Yeah, we'll just see what happens. It could be, I think, that um, Ellis Martin might be allowed on to, for, for contested scrubs yeah. to continue, but we'll, we'll get that clarified for you. Yeah, luckily she's only just off, so she'll, <laughs> she'll still be warm, Ellis Martin. But uh, we hope, obviously, often it looks fairly worrying with the stretchers on and the player not moving, but it's, we obviously don't know the extent of the injury, but what we do know is that they always take really serious precautions with neck and head injuries, and therefore we hope that Mother Wright is okay, and this is very much just as to keep her as safe as possible. Yeah, just as, especially since um, she was out with an ACL injury, um, got it last January, played in the World Cup. Um, she's born in New Zealand and played in the World Cup in New Zealand and then picked up an injury at club at Sail Sharks last January. And so this is her just uh, made it back for, for club matches in February and coming back. So best wishes to Molly and um, hope it's, it's, it's not too serious. Scotland start, starting to go through the, the warm-up drills. Ellis Martins, yeah, will be back on. Yeah, so there she is warming up in the pink boots. But this was the try which Ellis Martin scored in the first half, which is currently the difference between the sides. Scotland, as I mentioned, very much hoping they can push on in this championship. As I say, finishing best out of Ireland, Wales and Italy will get your World Cup place and also if you can get into third spot you'll get into the WXV1, the top tier, Scotland of course won the second tier competition in South Africa in the autumn, but if you can get third spot that would get you, or above you'd get into WXV1 and the loser goes below fourth and fifth going to WXV2 and bottom place plays a playoff with the Rugby Europe. That's right. Championship winner to determine who goes into two and who goes into three. And then, of course, the six teams in that WXV tournament, the six highest finishers, I should say, in that WXV tournament come the autumn, who haven't already qualified for the World Cup, will take the remaining spots in the tournament in England, which begins in August 2025, which is going to be enormous for the women's game. Let's have it here in the UK. England, of course, smarting from their final defeat back on home soil to try and win the whole thing as they try and win another Grand Slam, playing Wales later in Ashton Gate. Here at the Hive, we're just waiting for Molly Wright to be removed from the pitch after that injury. Yeah, it's wonderful the WXV tournament I think has done for, for all sides, all competition. It's raising the level of competitiveness um, for, for all teams, all countries, as 18 teams get the chance to play on a global stage um, in, in the autumn window. And it's just fantastic that that's happening and will be happening again. Obviously, it won't happen in a World Cup year, but it's great that that's happening. And Scotland have taken that momentum from the WXV2 trophy win and um, into the Six Nations. Absolutely. Scotland, a case in point, winning all their games. and building momentum coming into the Six Nations, which you can see the benefits of as Molly Wright is put on the back of the cart to be removed from the pitch. We wish her well. Best wishes, Molly. And hope that, as we say, it's not too serious and it is precautionary. And this will have an impact on the game now because both sides have had to stand about and the focus can drift and the muscles can cool down slightly it's about how you refocus absolutely because that the flow of the game has been interrupted but you've got to keep the flow within yourselves within your team and to keep that momentum going and not let any um the disruption interrupt that flow now we'll resume with a scrum such a vital one here as scotland trying get themselves out of their own half because in this second period France have had all the territory in possession really down this end of the pitch Bourdon Sanssouz feeds the ball and we get back underway it's a 
strong set piece from France Menager Bourdon Sanssouce attacks the line Nelson tackles made 11 of them against Wales the most dominant tackles in the opening round as well as foul makes some metres Kirwa pulls it back to Vernier Condé Boulard Arpe stays in touch and finishes in the corner and that's what happens when France click through the hands, soft fingers, and Kelly Arbe finishes off a brilliant move, and the French hit the front finally in this second half. Yeah, it was a really good scrum. They had they had penalty advantage and just simple hands there. Vernier there and Boulard just coming into the line from full back. And Arbe at 14 just finishing there, just a tall, and that's come, keeping her balance just enough just to, to, to finish in that corner there, her first try for, for France at a senior level. You can see Emily Boulard just stepping, coming infield there and holding Rona Lloyd before the pass goes on the outside. Now the chance to go five in front. Lina Kirwa. Successful with her only attempt so far. Five from five in this championship. This is a very tough ask from the touch line. Well, it was a good strike, but it doesn't trouble the posts and it's a three-point game France have reasserted themselves what do Scotland have in response now Thompson gets things underway. Oh, and that's come off a foot, and then it's just kept in by K. Rock. That's brilliant skill after initially getting her bearings wrong. Bartlett in there trying to hold things up. Use it! And there's the first use it from the referee. Tara Cox is Verdun Sansus. Puts it up, Chloe Rowley gathers comfortably and the first chance for her to open those legs and that's a strong hit. It was a bit of a high one, but I hear the referee saying there was maybe a drop there from Chloe Rowley from the first hit, so Gallagher takes on Mattinson. Thompson juggles with it and it's knocked on. And France will look to counter. Take him back. Rolly. And then Chloe Rolly's taking a sore one off the ball here as the kicking duel goes on. Nelson puts it into the sunny Edinburgh sky. And France think about the quick one and then opt to take the line out. Well, what do you make of that, Heather? Yeah, well, to all intents and purposes, I'm not sure Boulard knew that she was directly behind Chloe, was directly, she, she went up in the air. So I think uh, no foul play there. But certainly they, they, they're aware of Chloe. Chloe played in France. She played in Lille for two years. So uh, as evidence for that tackle for Lille on, on Chloe in this, in this touch line here. So yeah, they're aware of the threat. Change for France as Charlotte Escudero is on for Axel Bertemieux. That's the alteration they made from the start last week. Yeah. I'm not sure watching that again. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's an accidental collision, but it is enough for it to be a penalty. You happy with that? You happy with that? Dan, are you agreeing with that? Yeah, agree. OK, so just give us the exact mark, mate, but we'll go back yeah. to the penalty here. Yeah, it'll be a... 
Well, there you go. It's going to be a penalty, nothing too serious, but foul play because there's no 22, uh, attempt, really. Yeah, I think uh, charge down or tackle. Yeah, I think that's fair. Clear communication from yeah, the so officials. And then we just need to know where the kick landed as well. It was, uh, looks like it went straight out, didn't it? So you can go, you can go for a line out up there. If you want, if you want a line out up there, you're welcome to it. Or you can have it here. But it'll be there. <laughs> yeah, the ball lands on the other 10 meters, 15 meters from touch. So you got the option, yeah. Dan. I think the fact so the, that she the, turned the ball is in Bula our favour. 15 meters from touch in the French half. In the French half, so they can have that. They can have the line yes. up there. A penalty. So we can have a penalty up there on the 15. Yep. Sorry, mate, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> that's right, a lot sorry, of apology there. Another tackle well from Sarah Cox as they try and work out where exactly Scotland can get his penalty from, but they've got it in a position they'd much prefer. They can take the yardage, which they will do so gleefully and gratefully as Lisa Thompson. Thompson doesn't make touch. That's an error. A reprieve from France, and then it's compounded by the knock on. And a little 10 seconds of madness from Lisa Thompson there. Yeah, I think sometimes just like trying just to go for that extra metre in the kick, just take, take a couple of metres back and just make it safe. She'll be frustrated. She largely kicked well, Lisa Thompson, but got to park it and move on because now Scotland have some defending to do. It's still just a three-point game. So much more competitive than a year ago. France, by this stage, and Van were steaming clear to a 55-0 route. Not so here as we approach the final quarter. It's still delicately poised. France with an attacking option, though, as Vernier takes it up. And then they have the penalty. Tackle without the ball. Number 12. Tackle without the ball. Do you want to go for post? Post. And France are going to opt to try and extend their leads here. Yeah, Vernier's yeah. starting to look a bit more lively in attack. She's just trying, she's just challenging that defence, just putting them on the back foot a bit more. Yeah, Lisa Thompson with a tackle off the ball there. It's just a tricky couple of minutes for her after a good performance, but France now with the opportunity to put a living on the board and make it a six point game. Kirwa to extend France's advantage. And it strikes the post. And Scotland, through Kareem Grant, scramble the ball. Wembe making a nuisance of herself in that ruck, the French replacement loose head. It's a good carry from Bartlett. Oh, then there comes the penalty. And it's Ambre Wembe again in there. Over the ball. And Leah Bartlett penalised for holding on. Yeah, Kareem Grant did well from the from the penalty. They went off the uprights there, but um, France just just slightly on the on the uh, up at the moment, just like being really clinical at that breakdown. Wembe fresh legs, just getting really low. Yeah, Bartlett not releasing. Well, they may have missed the opportunity to stretch their lead by three, and now they're hoping for more. And they're going to make some changes. Both teams are going to make some changes. Alexandra Chambon comes on at scrum half in place of Pauline Bourdon-Sansous, who 
Scotland have largely managed to keep quiet. And then Elian Clark is on for Scotland in the front row. Here comes the line out. It's loose. Who comes out with the ball? It's Scotland. A vital moment goes in favour of those in dark blue as Clark immediately gets into the thick of the action. And it's cleared. And Scotland survive. Another France line out. Yeah, Eliane Clark there coming on at tight head. Well played, Christine Belisle. Eliane Clark, Bristol Bears. Again, been playing regularly at Bristol Bears and they're just tidying up superbly well in that 22, allowing for an exit kick. Well, Ellis Martin, the hooker, is taking a sore one and they've not got any hookers left after Molly Wright went off injured moments after coming on as a replacement for Martin. So we well, may be in uncontested scrum territory here. But we'll see if Ellis Martin can shake this wrist injury off, but it doesn't look good. It's her finger has perhaps been trampled on. I just hear popping that back in, Heather. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, just bruised. Hopefully, <laughs> just a sore one. Yeah. Finger swiftly put back into place. And Scotland come out with the ball. Can they get out their half? Stewart, who's been magnificent again made the most tackles in Scotland ranks so far as Boulard collects. Menager, Vernier spots some open prairie in the backfield and that's going to go dead. Yeah, definitely that sort of couple of wind assisted kicks that Scotland find in, in the first half as well. So both teams just having to manage it. Scotland finding it hard to get out of their half. That one chance there, just not quite finding touch with Lisa Thompson's kick. But here's an opportunity for Scotland. Yeah, there's a couple of French kicks that have Nine. gone all right. And scrum half change for Scotland. Mary McDonald replacing Katie Mattinson for the final 18 minutes. Yeah, Mary McDonald from Glasgow um, was in the squad last week, didn't play um, against Wales, but on to, to, to make an impact here in the, in the last 20. Well, here we go. The forwards collide once more. McDonald with her first pass away. Here's Orr. Tries to force it, gets it to Grant, but it's gone forwards. Yeah, Conde doing the doing the hard charge in defence, her opposite number. She'll have done her homework in MR from last week and she'll know what a strong player she is. Emmeline Gros, the uh, back row forward, trotting on for France. And Gael Irme, who was captain when they won the Grand Slam in 2018, the last time France won this championship. It's been all England in the year since. Superbly there by Irme, really good work at the breakdown. And here we have another scrum. This game is there for the taking for both. France, of course, with the advantage on the scoreboards. But it's just three points. Scotland may just need one moment, one bit of pressure, one penalty, anything. It's about who's going to step up in both teams' 
in the final 16 minutes as France get the shove on. Kirwa, and it's Poulard who steps in and floats the kick downfield. Raleigh takes it. She loves to run and she's thumped by Conde, but manages to ride the challenge and has another nibble. McDonald offload away to Clark. And that looked high. Yes, yeah, certainly. Here's Stewart. Again, MR managing to squeak through a half gap and she's going into touch though, the centre. Some nice passing there and some nice work by Chloe Rowley managing to ride the tackle there, but here, yeah. An arm round the neck there, I think. Now that is a penalty all day long, you would have to say. Ambre Mayembe, the arm round the neck, and it's not going to be picked up on. And the line out is not straight. Yeah, both sides just sort of couple of errors creeping in each side so just who can manage this period of play and just shore it up and keep consistent and minimise the errors Clara Joyeux one in the front row as Asia Kalfawi makes way and a front row change as well for Scotland, I think that was Leah Bartlett that went off, and Lisa Colburn is on. Nice to see her back after a horrible time with injuries in the last couple of years. Thompson met with the full force of the French defence. McDonald's, Martin, what a shift she's put in. Having to play the full 80. McDonald's kick isn't the best, but it's a penalty in a way for Scotland. Yeah, not rolling away there. Again, France trying to, to slow down the, um, the, the, the Scottish attack, but um, yeah, great play here and an opportunity to, to get further inroads. Thompson, this time, makes sure she makes touch. No mistakes this time. Get Scotland further up the park try and put France under some pressure because they've not really had too much to deal with in the second half. Yeah, the line out, they just gone there before the kick again. It was front ball, nice and easy, nice and safe. Well taken by, by McMillan. Martin finds Malcolm off the top. McDonald. Nelson, it's not scrappy, it's backwards, says the referee. Lloyd steals a few yards. McDonald. France putting in some ferocious hits. Gallagher out the back. And Rowley snagged. Lasso head down. Drives on. Or under pressure from Vernier, but steps away. Menager tries to disrupt. Lasso makes precious centimetres over the gain line as Malcolm presents the ball for McDonald whips it away Nelson or stabs a kick in Bullard's there Bullard takes Bullard clears and Nelson has lost sight of that one in the sunshine collects at the second attempt looks for Rowley Malcolm Here's Clark, needs a bit of help here. No, help your feet, leave it. And Conde told to get your hands off that ball. Stewart out to Grant, who has to hurdle up, body on the floor. And now the counter up comes in, and the penalty to France. And you just felt that Scotland never got the forward momentum they needed from that passage of play. 
Yeah, it was a good, really, really good passage of play, but perhaps just keep the ball in hand. Um, understand probably the tactics have been to kick, but with the, the way the game's going at the moment, I think just keep ball in hand. But there, France just showing their absolute explosiveness at the breakdown on the counter ruck. Real pressure there. Yeah, really putting putting Scotland under pressure in that wide channel. RB, 18 years of age, really fighting there. Chambon, replacement scrum half. And that just about squeaks over the whitewash. Uh, France smell blood and a chance to perhaps kill this game as we enter the final 10 minutes. Sosha spins the ball between her hands. France need this one to go to hands. It's too high for Menager, but it comes back down to Escudero off to Vernier. Now they come again on the second wave. Manaifelu, the captain, pops out. Menager. 90 metres carried Roman Menager so far. Has another goal. Escudero. Chambon. Gives it to Filio. France inching closer, but Scotland. And who else? But Evie Gallagher clamped over the ball. And Scotland get themselves out of jail again. Yeah, the French replacements have really brought energy. To, to the French attack. Escudero is just threatening all the time, changing her lines of attack. Menage, but look right in there. Real area of expertise now. That's art for a forward, a back row forward, Heather, isn't it? Just that picture there. She's playing eight for Scotland, but she's playing, been playing seven at clubs, so that's really proving useful. She's just been an enormous player for Scotland in the last couple of years. Evie Gallagher. The uh, kick isn't quite as far as Scotland would have liked. No, 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 no. And, uh, Agat Socha, the hooker for France, makes way for Manon Bigot, who's returned after several years out to become a firefighter. Last played in the 2016 Six Nations for France, which they won. Only returned last year. The 33 year old and on at hooker for the last nine minutes. And France have it. Menager comes away with it, tries to force the offload again, and Thompson pilfers the ball. Absolute fight there from Lisa Thompson. Clark ships it on one. Scotland penalty. And this game is still there for them. That just shows you the character of Lisa Thompson. A couple of things not going her way in this half, but absolute fight, well read, great turnover. Well, can Scotland get themselves in a position to at the very least get a kickable penalty as Thompson finds touch? Oh, the tension at the hive in the final eight minutes. Who would have thought that Scotland would have been right in with a chance of winning this game still? The crowd are absolutely engrossed, absolutely engrossed. Big moments here. And there's Molly Wright. Good to see her sitting on the bench, so all that treatment and things looked precautionary. As McDonald is smothered, and now France pile in. At the breakdown, that Scotland clear it out. Lloyd plays scrum half. McMillan on her 50th cap rolls over the gain line. Gallagher halted. McDonald goes back the other way, just held onto by Martin. McMillan, Thompson, little shimmy with the arms there. Scotland run out of room. On the short side. No, no. 
France's defence just so ferocious and holding firm. Saying to Scotland, if you want to win this game, you're going to have to get through us from a long way out. Bullard collects, charged down by Lloyd. And Scotland are throwing everything at this. Excellent play there by Scotland. Really good composure, going through the phases, setting up the box kick. Excellent box kick there, McDonald. Not too long, and a really good chase there by uh, uh, Lloyd. GB sevens, but also registered for Stadboard delay, so knows some of the the, the opposition. A test now for replacement hooker Manon Bigo. Comes down the middle. Filiou gathers Mienbe, the prop has it. Scotland doing their best to hold it up, but the tackle is complete. Chambon pulls it back. Kairoua clears. Lloyd takes, gets it in the hands of Raleigh. He's going to go for the little chip and chase. It bounces up. France have it. Boulard she made a difference now. goes to ground. Here's Condé. Millen's in there. And France content for now to see the clock kick down, tick down, and it's forced wide again. But Menager out the back, infield, but she was in touch. This is such a fantastic passage of play of rugby. France really trying to play, still keep their offloading game going. Conde really to the fore. And just again, the pressure from Lloyd. She's been immense in defence today, and, and our insider. Marine Menager, not seen too much of her with ball in hand, but not France at all, really, apart from the try, which was really well worked. And at the moment, it means they're on track to win this game. Scotland line out secured. Nelson up to just about halfway. McDonald excavates the ball. And France get the penalty. And that could be a huge moment in determining the victor here at the Hive. Boulard goes to touch. And France with four minutes to survive or add to their leads. And if they do, that would kill off brave Scotland's hopes of a huge upset here in Edinburgh. And round two of the Women's Six Nations, Bigo gathers herself, arrows it into the arms of Filiou. Bigo has it. Filio shouts encore. She wants the drive to continue, but France forced to use it. Now here's Romain Menager, Gallagher, and Thompson meet the French number eight. Wembe, Chambon gets it away. Vernier tries to pop out the back. There was no one at home. And Scotland will have the scrum, but they have so much ground to make up in the final minute and a half. Ellis Martin there. She must be out on her feet. The shift she's put in. Yeah, absolutely outstanding from, from the young hooker, really outstanding. Still all to play for. Scotland. Here comes the scrum. 
France with a huge shove. Scotland driven off the ball. Here's RB. Darts for a gap. And that might just be Scotland's hopes of victory disappearing. France moving forward. Escudero driving on. They're not too far away now. Their space. Quiroa puts it over the top. Scotland just about survive. France a meter or so away from clinching victory. Forced backwards. We're into the final minute. Still Scotland hold out. France use the hands. Conde spins the pass out wide. Menager steps in field. Evades one tackle. Then met by Stewart and Lloyd. It's heroic Scotland defence, but they need the ball. France with 30 seconds to go. They want another score. Escudero. Chambon into traffic, into the referee. And the clock is about to go red. And France have penalty advantage too, which means victory is surely theirs. Roman Menager just short. Chambon gives it to Vernier, and there is a try for Emmeline Gros. And France have their victory. They've finally seen off the challenge of Brave Scotland. It's taken longer than anyone expected, but in the end, their physicality, their power, and their guile has told. Just some lovely hands here from France. Just sustained pressure. Scotland did so well to hold them out, but just the sustained pressure eventually paid off. Some great carries from Menager and Gros uh, replacement back row in finishing. Uh, it's a heartbreaker for Scotland, but France just persevered in the second half. It's been a bit of a grind. They've not been at their fluent best, perhaps no, been no, guilty George. of forcing things no, a bit George. too much, but in the end, they have just had too much in this second 40. And your player of the match, Heather, as Kirwa bisects the post. Yeah, the, the Guinness uh, Six Nations player of the match goes to Roman Minaje. Um, 15 carries, a, a 1 1 2 metres, just and three offloads. Um, just real, real threat in attack and uh, real elegance off the, the base of that scrum and real experience there, just proving, proving the decisive difference. Well, France go two from two. Brian Eason, how he'll be so proud of his players, but at the same time gutted that they didn't give themselves a chance when the scoreline was so tight in the second half. Down in France territory to try and nick a famous win and there is Roma Menager a totemic performance from the France number 8 that Scotland have so much to be proud of but ultimately it's defeat for them, France march on as their hopes continue of winning this championship, full time at the Hive Stadium, Scotland 5 France 15 And that means the standings after the first round. First game of the second round, I should say, of the Guinness Women's Six Nations. France are going to take their place at the top. No bonus point win, which could be crucial come the end of the championship. England still in second there after their bonus point win last week. Uh, they play Wales at 4.45. Chance to go two from two. Scotland still third. 
Wales just behind with that losing bonus point in Ireland and Italy winless but one you know, they face each other tomorrow in Dublin and France for now go top of the standings with that victory Brian Hardline, such an encouraging performance in so many ways for you there. Yeah, it was really encouraging, and like as you say, in so many ways. I thought defensively, we just we put our bodies on the line. You saw, you know, so I thought our line out defence was outstanding. Put them under pressure. We knew what to expect with France, and I thought we pressurised them all the way. I just felt at the end it was just, you know, so hard on the girls. Just they deserved a point out of that. They deserved a bonus point because, as you can see, them picking each other off the floor, 81st, 82nd minute. That's a that's a group that are going places. And you know, when you look at a team who have just competed against the third best team in the world. And are genuinely disappointed. Um, you know we are going places. Yeah, it shows the progress that's been made, even if you compare it to the result against France last year. Yeah, look, we we've been very clear around us saying that we don't benchmark ourselves and we benchmark performances. And I think if you look at performances, we are a team that's going in a really good direction. We can be very pleased with a lot of stuff. You know, we were inaccurate at times. There are things that we will fix, but you know we. Love playing here. I thought the crowd were absolutely outstanding. They were, you know, behind us all the way, and hopefully they showed. Well, I know they showed a performance that we should all be proud of. And a word for Ellis Martin, first start and a try. Yeah, look, Ellis Martin, first start, first try. You know, we took her off after 50. She, you know, she'd really emptied her tank. And you know, Molly Wright, first phase she came on, and you know, hopefully I've seen Molly walking around and glad to see that she's okay. But Ellis, literally getting a 30-second rest and then straight back on again. So, you know, she played 80 minutes and she put a real shift in. So she should be really proud of herself. And tell us what you thought about this crowd here. Many of them still here watching us. Just amazing. It's just to come to the hive and see, a, you know, pretty much a full crowd. The noise was outstanding. And then they just they pushed us all the way, and you know it just makes it a little bit easier for us. You know when they're working so hard, but when you see a crowd like this, I can just thank every one of you. So thank you very much. And finally, England in a fortnight, you must 
this must give you really good hope, this performance for that match. Yeah, they should have real heart. Um, that's the thing. We talk about relentlessness, we talk about heart, we talk, talk about working with each other. And, you know, that's England here next. We know it's a sellout crowd, there'll be capacity here. And, you know, hopefully we, well, I know we'll put in another performance that will make us all proud. And, you know, the, the girls will be proud of themselves. There is disappointment, rightly so, because we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best, one of the best teams in the world. And, we're, we're, we're coming. Yeah. OK, Brian, hard lines, but well done for a great performance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anne, well done. You got the victory. It wasn't an easy one, but you got there. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we knew all week that it was going to be a tough game, and that's what Scotland gave us today. So congratulations for them for that, and good luck for them uh, to them for the rest of the tournament. Uh, it was really tough indeed, and that's what we were uh, waiting for. It's so good to see that women's rugby is getting better and better each year, and that every game is getting harder and harder. So thank you for that. And how good does it feel to have two wins from two so far? It feels good. It was the goal for us, so we that's what we got. Yeah, and were you surprised at all about how close Scotland ran you today? Uh, not really. When we watched the game uh, from last week against Wales, we knew that it was going to be a tough one, and that's what we got today, so not really surprised. Just uh, really proud to see that women's rugby is getting better and better. And nice to finish off with a try right at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got Italy next at home in two weeks' time. So sure. you're, you've got Italy at home in two weeks' time, so you'll enjoy the chance to rest before that game? Yeah, we're going to rest 100% uh, next week, and then we get back uh, for Italy in two weeks at home as well, so it's going to be a cool one. OK, Manny, thanks for your time. Well Thank done. Thank you. Thanks. Rachel, hard lines, so much to be proud of in that performance, but ultimately you didn't get the win. Yeah, no, like, super proud of the team. I think, you know, if someone had told us that we'd get that result against the third best team in the world a year ago, we'd have bit their hand off. But I think we're not there anymore. You know, we were there until the end of the game. We showed that we're here to fight with the best. And I think, you know, I'm super proud of the, the, the fight that every single player put in us, peeling my players off the ground at full time. I couldn't ask for more. Um, but ultimately, our basics let us down a little bit today. Um, you know, they definitely won the set piece battle. Um, so we need to look at that. It's probably with the same same story last week. But in terms of front and up against a huge physical pack, I couldn't be prouder of the effort that's been put in by my team today. Yeah, how agonising was it right at the end there, just to lose that try right at the death? Yeah, you know, I think to come away with a losing bonus point would have been really nice and I think probably a fair reflection of our performance today so to lose that at the end is, is agonising but ultimately you know France are a, a, 
a top class team and uh, if you give them an opportunity like that they're going to take it so you know fair play to them I thought they were they were brilliant today from start to finish and you know it was a, a brilliant contest a brilliant advert for the game yeah a lot's been talked about how the progress has been made since the, the 23 players became on professional contracts you must look and you must think Brian Eason said it, it's a squad going places yeah absolutely like I think you only have to look at the performances of the last two weeks to see that and I think you know it's a squad full of character who will bounce back from this um, you know, defeat and agonising one at that to, to come out here in two weeks and hopefully do our fans proud who are, who are incredible today. It'll be great against England and finally just a word for Ellis Martin, first start today in a try. Yeah, first start, you know, she's she's an absolutely brilliant girl, she's a brilliant player, she's, you know, the work she's put in over the last couple of years to earn that, that privilege today is, is outstanding, you know, she's someone that you'd love to have in your team, she's always full of energy and, you know, she fully deserves to come away with a try for all that hard work. Well, well done for rallying the troops and a very good performance. Thanks very well much. Done. Cheers.